Welcome to my magic guide. I have a full walkthrough of how to train from level 1 to 99 here with a variety of different monsters that are going to get you the best XP as you progress through the levels. And also at higher levels I have a few different monsters to train on so you can mix up the training a bit and also one method that uh, is AFK and one that awards a fair amount of profit as well. So without further ado let's get started into the guide and showing you guys how to level up your mage. Before we start, I have a few disclaimers. I see magic as a combat skill, and most of my methods will be how to level through killing monsters. Alkene is a slow yet easy way to level magic. I'll be showing you better ways to level. However, Alkene is always an alternative. I wouldn't recommend Alkene as I said previously, it is slow, and also it costs money. And the methods that I'm showing you, you will gain money as long as you pick up the drops from the monsters, so no need to worry about money there. When you're just starting out from level 1 to 20, we're going to be killing cows and lumbridge. The only item that you need is a staff of air. You don't need any armor for them. The XP per hour is roughly 24,000 XP. However, keep in mind that all the XP rates are ones that I tested myself, and I'm testing these at 99 magic, so at lower levels they may be slower. Just keep that in mind. So for first starting off mage, you just want to make sure you have a staff of air. You really don't need any other items. And you want to go into your spellbook and auto cast the airstrike spell. And since you're using a staff of air, you won't be using any runes for this, so it's completely free. And then just these cows, which are a little bit to the east of Lumbridge, you just go into the pen here and kill the cows. And this is a great way to very first start off um, killing. They are weak to earth spells, but a uh, air spell kills them just fine as well. You don't have to worry about that. And you get 26 mage XP per kill, which might not seem like a lot, but you can one hit them even at level one mage. So uh, it does add up to be quite a lot, quite a bit of XP when you're just starting out. From level 20 to 40, we're going to be in the Lumbridge Catacombs. The items you need for this are a spider wand and a spider orb and some spider silk armor if you feel that you have a lower defensive level and you need it. You can also bring food here as well. The armor isn't very required if you have a higher defensive level around 30 or 40. You also need air runes and the XP per hour here is about 36,000 XP so it is significantly better than cows. You can buy all the spider stuff and the air runes off of the GE so uh, yeah that's pretty easy to obtain. At 20 mage we're going to be killing skeletons in Lumbridge Catacombs so before you can start this method you have to complete the quest the Blood Pact. Uh, you need to talk to this lady who will be right here in the southern part of Lumbridge by the graveyard and then once you finish the quest you can climb down the catacomb entrance and then climb down these stairs right here just to the west and then climb down the next set of stairs and you're in the catacombs and then it's just a quick run through the catacombs to the skeletons. Although these monsters are weak to earth, we're going to be using air because it's cheaper to only use air runes. And also these monsters have such low defense that you don't need a higher level spell to hit them. You will hit all the time even with air. So the weapons I'm using are a spider wand and a spider orb. You can buy these in the GE. Also if you have a very low defense level, below level 30 I would say, you also want to wear spider silk robes, which you can buy in the GE as well. I was not able to purchase them um, because my bank is full and I didn't have the space. But you can buy those as well, and they'll just help you a little bit with defense. Also, you're going to want to bring some food, unless you have a high defense. And then just attack these skeletons, and you can kill them extremely quickly. Um, just be aware, at, lo at lower mage levels, you aren't going to hit quite as high as me, like when I showed myself killing the cows. Um, you're not going to hit quite that high as often, but you still will hit fairly well, even with a lower mage level. Um, also, the spell you're going to be wanting to use now is Air Bolt instead of Air Strike, because you're now level 20 mage and you have the level to use that. So you just want to make sure you go to Autocast on Air Bolt, um, and then you want to click Set as Main Hand, and then do Autocast again, and click Set as Offhand, and that way both of your both your Spider Silk Wand and your Spider Orb will both be casting Air Bolt. So just continue down here, they give 35 XP per kill, and they're a bit more tightly bunched together. You can pick up some of the drops if you want, although it's not really worth it. Uh, and you're going to be staying here till level 40 mage, and it won't take very long. From levels 40 to 50, we're going to be killing Ankus in the Barbarian Village. The items that you need are a split bark wand, which I was not able to obtain, but it is the best wand that you can use at your level, so I'd recommend to buy one of those, as well as air runes. We don't need to be using other runes just yet as Ankus still have a fairly low defense. 
and the XP per hour is much better than skeletons here, clocking in at around 71,000 XP, so getting to level 50 should take hardly any time at all. And you can also gain a bit of money from these if you pick up their drops. They drop um, some items such as herbs, charms, blood runes, death runes, and pure essence that is noted that can all be worth picking up. From levels 40 to 50, we're traveling to the Barbarian Village, and we're going down in the Stronghold of Security. So for anyone who actually hasn't actually done the Stronghold of Security yet, uh, you can just Google it if you need a guide, but basically proceed down to the lowest floor of the Stronghold. Okay, so I just made it my way down to the lowest floor of the Stronghold. So from the ladder, you just want to proceed straight north. Uh, and there's going to be a room with only Ankus in it, and this is where we're going to be training. Um, for level 40, you're going to want to buy a split bark wand off of the Grand Exchange, um, and this will be your best wand that you can use at this level. Unfortunately, I was not able to grab a hold of one, so I'm using a bat wand instead, but uh, the XP per hour shouldn't be too different. Also, remember that once you get level 41 magic, you want to start using the Air Blast spell, because that's the spell you can use at 41. Um, these also do drop a few charms, uh, mostly golds, and they can also drop some items of higher value, such as herbs, blood runes, death runes, and noted pure essence. So if you are in the and looking for a bit of profit, you want to pick those up as well. And just continue training here until you reach level 50. From levels 50 to 70, we're going to be killing Earth Warriors in the Edgeville Dungeon. This is in the wilderness, however, being PK'd here is highly unlikely, but just in case if you are staying here for extended periods of time, don't bring items that you are too stressed about losing. Um, you also want to upgrade to be wearing bat armor and a bat wand and book, and make sure you bring lots of food as well because they can hit pretty hard. Um, you also want water and air runes because they have fairly high defense, so you're going to need to use a water spell because that is what they're weak to. Um, this is also an AFK spot, so you don't need to be paying full attention to the screen, which is great. Everyone loves AFK, and the XP per hour is nearly 100,000. Clocking in at uh, 98,000 XP per hour is what I got there. The next stage of our journey from level 50 to level 70, which is ki quite a leap, are, is we are going to be killing Earth Warriors. Uh, we are going to be killing these in the wilderness, so just beware of PKers, but it is an Edgeville dungeon which hardly anyone actually frequents, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, a couple of things that you want to know is, first of all, you want to be using uh, fairly good defensive armor because the Earth Warriors are level 112, so if you are low defensive level, they can hit you pretty good. Um, you're also going to want uh, some food, uh, so you can last here a while, and also you want to make sure that your mul Wilderness Multi-Combat Indicator, which is this, you want to turn that so that the Cross Swords are over your head, because if they are not, you will only be able to attack one Earth Warrior at a time, and you won't be able to attack another until that one dies. Uh, another great thing about this spot is it actually is quite AFK. If you stand in the spot where I am standing, um, only one Earth Warrior can attack you at a time, and they are aggressive no matter what level you are, so the next one will just come right up to you and attack you uh, next. So this can be a very good AFK spot. You can AFK here for 10 minutes uh, until you have to move spots. Um, one other thing is you might want to get a Tome of Frost since these are weak to water. Uh, the Tome of Frost provides unlimited free water runes and at level 50 mage is uh, one of the best offhands that you can use. And of course you want to be upgrading to Batwing with a Bat Wand at level 50 mage of course. So just make sure you're using the spell Water Blast and uh, dual cast the um, Earth Warriors. They also drop a fair amount of Crips and Charms and some Herbs too of course. Uh, so you want to keep an eye out for those. They're also kind of higher levels, so they might drop effigies as well. But overall, this is just a great way to train, and you should be able to get level 70 in no time. For level 59 to 99, if you have completed the Family Crest quest, you can superheat gold bars using nature runes and a staff of fire. Um, you need the gold smelting gauntlets that you get from a reward from the quest, as well as gold ore. Uh, you do lose money doing this. However, I decided to throw this in there because I know a lot of people need to train smithing as well as mage, and this is very good XP per hour in both. Uh, you get about 130,000 mage XP per hour and 140,000 smithing XP per hour if you are going at full speed. Just keep in mind you will lose money from doing this, and it is not AFK. It requires a lot of clicking, but if you are up to the challenge, you, the rewards are pretty good. Superheat item is more commonly known as a way to train smithing, but you can also train mage with it as well. It gives about 130k 
mage XP per hour, and you also get a lot of smithing XP per hour as well. So unfortunately, I'm wearing cooking gauntlets, but um, as a reward for the family crest quest, you can instead get goldsmithing gauntlets. You can also change them to goldsmithing gauntlets any time by going to the Alcarid mine and talking to the man there in a gold cape, and he'll change them for you. And while wearing these gauntlets, if you superheat gold ore, it will give you 56 XP per ore for smithing, and also 52 XP per ore for magic. So what you want to do is put the super eat item on your action bar, and then you just want to uh, press the key on the action bar that the super eat item is on, and quickly super heat a full inventory of gold ore like so, and it's very good XP per hour, and it's not too expensive as well. From level 70 to 99, this is my favorite method for strictly training magic. You need to complete the quest, The Branches of Darkmare, which has fairly high requirements, but because of how good this training spot is, I would recommend just knocking those requirements out and completing the quest if you are serious about training your mage. Just be aware that I do have a full guide on how to kill Vire Lords down in the description, so if you have any more questions that aren't explained in this video because I don't go too in-depth, um, check that guide out. I would recommend doing it just because this is a really good method of training. And this is also AFK, you don't have to pay full attention. Um, they do hit fairly hard, but as long as you have decent armor and some food and a healing familiar with you, no need to worry about that. Also, you can just leave Soul Split on and that will take care of all the healing. Uh, the XP per hour here is about 222,000 XP, so it is pretty good XP. So for killing the Vire Lords, um, this method actually is pretty AFK, and I do have a full, complete guide on how to do this that will be down in the description. This is just going to be a quick run over. Um, I will have to say this is by far the best method, just um, AFK, AFK wise, uh, that I am going to be able to show you. Uh, you want to make sure you have that Blisterwood Staff that you made during the quest. Um, the branches of dark mare and just have auto retaliate on and um, you also are going to want to have maybe soul split if you have it or just make sure you have a lot of food and a bunyip uh, and then you can afk for a few minutes these guys will start to damage you a bit after a while but it's nothing that soul split or a bunyip and a bit of food can't heal from level 75 to 99 you can kill water fiends with magic they are not weak to magic so this is not the most effective method as you will splash often, but it is still pretty good XP just because of how much XP they give per kill. Um, the items you'll need is at least a Staff of Light. Anything below that will not have enough accuracy to kill them. And uh, I would recommend Robes of Subjugation if you can afford them or buy some RM's Armor as that has pretty good defense. The XP per hour here is nearly 200,000. Around 196,000 XP per hour is what I got and you also get lots of crimson charms if you need those. So from level 75 to 99 you can kill water fiends in the uh, ancient cavern. Um, you have to have at least an, a staff of light which is has pretty good accuracy. Any weapon below this accuracy is not going to hit well on them. You still do splash very often but you can kill the water fiends and you want to make sure you have a charm collector as well from dungeoneering which will help you pick up all your crimson charms this is a pretty efficient way to train mage as it is pretty good mage xp and on top of that you're also getting charms which are incredibly useful as well um, just keep in mind it is faster to kill these with range but they are manageable with mage as well um, you are going to have to have like a unicorn and some food because they do hit pretty hard on just mage armor their range attack is pretty powerful and range, mage armor has pretty low defense but um, these give fairly decent XP. They aren't the best XP wise, but you do get the charms. That's the main reason for training here. From levels 90 to 99, uh, you can kill Ganodermic Beasts if you have 95 Slayer. I'm aware that most people with 90 have 95 Slayer probably already have 99 Magic, but just in case if you need to train your Mage and you would like to get some money on the way, you can kill Ganodermic Beasts. I have done extensive testing and found that the money here is around 1.7 to 2 mil an hour without having to pay full attention. It takes about 30 seconds to kill again in Dermic Beast, so you can AFK a little bit, which is great. And the XP per hour here is about 137,000 XP, so it's not nearly as good XP wise as other methods, but the money is well worth it. So this next method is pretty high level because you do need 95 Slayer just to kill the Ganoderic Beasts. Uh, to get there you need to use the Fairy Ring code BIP uh, which will tell you right outside the entrance and if you have 95 Slayer I'm guessing you know how to get to Ganoderic Beasts so I'll run there really fast and uh, then show you guys how to kill them. 
So once you're here, just uh, attack the Ganondorian Beast, and um, I just use the Air Surge spell because it only uses air runes. One thing that actually is fairly interesting, if you are using an Armadillo Battle Staff, which provides unlimited air runes, and you have a Bone Crusher, a Demon Horn Necklace, and non-degradable armor, it actually is possible to stay here forever without banking, um, because you can just use the Soul Split that you get from the Bone Crusher and the Demon Horn Necklace. You don't get enough prayer to Soul Split all the time, but you do get enough to Soul Split, so you will never run out of health. So that's just kind of an interesting fact, but um, they are very good money. It's about two mil an hour here, uh, and it's fairly AFK as well, because it doesn't take too much of your attention. Just camping this one Ganodermic Beast right by the entrance. Two mil profit an hour, very worth doing if you have 95 Slayer, but not the best XP out there. Here are some other methods that you can use to train your magic, namely being Slayer tasks. These are some examples of tasks that Curadel and Duradel assign that can give pretty good magic XP. Uh, I have here Steel Dragons, Iron Dragons, Blood Velds, Polypore Creatures, Ice Strike Worms, and Gargoyles. Killing all of these will give you pretty good magic XP as well as Slayer XP, of course, if it's your task. That's going to be all for this guide. I just wanted to note one thing. Um, I am aware that there is a method of training magic right now in the Abyss, killing Abyss creatures with the ancient magics. If you are into that, you can just Google or check it out yourself. It's a great way to gain effigies and also magic XP. However, I have heard from some pretty reliable sources that there is a very, very high chance that that is going to get nerfed soon. So because of that, I am not going to put it in this guide. But just be aware, if you are watching this guide recently and the Abyss method has not been nerfed, just Google the Abyss magic training, something like that, and that can be a great way to train as well. However, it is pretty expensive since you will be using the Ancients, and I wanted to stick to methods that would not lose you money for the most part. But that's all for my guide. Thanks for watching, and I hope it helped. Uh, until the next guide, farewell.